Good morning, church. You may be seated. Thank you. Viewers, thank you for your time. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we talk about how to be filled with the Holy Ghost as a Christian. If Christian need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, how? That is the question. How? How to be filled with what? With the Holy Ghost. I think it's a core and fundamental area of the gospel. Very fundamental. To be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because you cannot do anything for God. As far as God is concerned, you cannot represent God. You cannot involve in God's project without Holy Ghost. He who sees him see the Holy Ghost. You cannot be a Christian without him. You know Jesus, you know the Holy Ghost. So this is why today we say Christian and true Christian. Me, that are Christian, that are also true one. In every area of life that are fake, that are true. Which one are you? I have been for several years, several years experience an encounter on this area, going by what we are seeing every day in the ministry here. This is apostolic ministry. Not just ministry, but apostolic ministry. So several years of experience and encounter so I think uh, I'm going to share with you my personal experience, support with the Holy Bible, referring you to those areas in the Bible, my personal experience I'm going to share with you. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say much about the baptism of water, which is human acts. Mm. When you are okay, they will just usher you for that baptism. So today, we will use Peter, the Apostle Peter. So we are not going, going deep on baptism of water, but Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We have many books to support this. But I will take my proof reading from the book of Acts. Acts 10. That will be my proof reading. Acts 10. And the other book, you have them from the book of John 14, verse 26, will really help you. And the First Corinthians 12, you take your reading from verse 1 to the end. That will really help. And the first Corinthians chapter 2, that verse 13 will do. That verse 13. And the Roman 14. About this issue of faith. Anything that does not come from faith is sin. That's Roman 14. You take reading from verse 5 to the end. You can take it from verse 23. And the book of Colossians chapter 3 and Ephesians 5. That will help. When you get home, take those books. Listen to the message. Hallelujah. You take those books and about seven sons of Scavers. Acts 19, take from verse 13. Okay, thank you. Are you there? Hallelujah. So let's. Take the book of Acts 10, 
Colonials call for Peter. That's taking reading from verse one. Accession. There was a man named Colonials, a centurion in what was known as Italia Regiment. What was known as Italia Regiment. He and all his family were devout. And God, fearing, he gave generously. Generously to those in need and pray to God regularly. So let's take our proofreading there, verse 44. Verse 44. While Peter was still speaking, these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message and the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished, surprised to see this, that the gate of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, that is unbelievers, people they are not expecting that this could rich that's poor on for they heard them speaking in what in tongues this is we talk about all this today praising God then Peter said surely no one can stand in the way of their world being baptized like I told you the baptism by water is a human art by water, it's human art. Take note of that. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Why Peter should stay with them for a few days? For counseling, for guidance, for the purpose Okay, so you have several books here today which are going to help you. Hallelujah. Christian must be filled with the world. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit to be a Christian. No one can do the work of God no one without the Holy Spirit. Doing it without the Holy Spirit that amounts to taking huge affliction, huge trouble. Pain. The Bible says not everyone that says Jesus is Lord that do this with the help of the Holy Spirit. You can say, you can do, you can preach without the help of the Holy Spirit. But you find that you are inflicting pain, wounds, arm on yourself. So let's quote Peter. Why Peter was speaking? In that verse 44, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, fell on the hearers. What does that mean? Mean fell on those who believed. On those who prepared. the Holy Ghost. Meaning that God own Peter's word. God own Peter's word. He bore witness to Peter's word. In other words, he was sent by God himself. That's evident. 
So he was sent by God himself. This is not Peter. A representative, an ambassador. I will take you one by one like I have told you. I'm going to share my encounter with the Holy Ghost so that you, it will be easy. If I'm talking about what is in the Bible alone, it may seem to be difficult for you, but let's go, let's go. Yes. To be prepared for the Holy Ghost, I want to be baptized. I really want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The step you are going to take, listen to me with all your heart. You must listen to me with all your word. The heart that holds grudging, the heart that holds offense, the heart that holds pain of the past, this is where your problem comes from. Everyone, if not everyone here, holds one offense on the other. Unforgiveness. Everyone here, viewer, listen to me, everyone holds one offense or the other because you are claiming your right. I cannot be cheated. In short, why, 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 why? Whether you are cheated or not, offense is a crime to God. Listen to me with all your heart, but not heart that hold offense or pain of the past. But you are holding offense. You are holding offense in the process of claiming your right. You are holding offense. That is why it will be difficult for you to have my message with all your heart. You hear? You see me as a lecturer? You know, in the school, you hear? And it will go into your world, mental sense. You receive it, not your heart. To receive mercy with all your heart, your heart must be free. Heart means man spirit. How many of us has free heart here today? Heart that does not hold grudge, heart that does not hold offense, heart that does not have nothing to do with yesterday, whatever happened, unless the one that glorify God. This is where you are. This is where you are. This is why it will be difficult for you to, to listen to me with all your heart. Now, I'm sharing with you how you can be baptized. How you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen. You must listen to me with all your heart. Heart that does not hold offense. Speak to yourself in sound. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to get me in the devil. Your heart, as you are listening to me. Because there is no neutral heart. You can't say, mm, I don't want to talk. If you don't want to talk, your heart will talk, your spirit will talk. Something is going on. Don't allow your spirit to take hold of you. You control the spirit. Control it. No, no, no. You cannot. I must control you. Why I'm listening to TB Joshua, I must control my heart. Speak to yourself in psalm, in him, spiritual song, making melodies in your heart to God. But how many hearts now are engaged in those? A lot of things going on in your heart. What is going to happen today? Mm, don't allow your heart to control you. No. You immediately, as a Christian, speak to your heart in psalm, in him, in spiritual song, make melodies in your heart. That is hard to receive. By the time you get hold of your heart, you are about to be filled. You are not getting hold of your heart. Your heart is jumping up and down. A lot of things going on. I know my business. I don't know. Let me look at my time. Oh, mm. That is why sometimes you don't need to go to the restroom. The, the, the diabetes you are talking about is because you are not getting hold of your heart. 
When your heart is jumping, jumping, ah, I've not gone to the toilet today. Immediately, you have the sense of going to the toilet. Ah, I've not eaten today. Immediately, you have the sense of eating. Uh, I've not made a call to my brother today. Immediately, the call enter your phone. The real battle is in our heart. For, against, for, against, for, against. If you can control your heart, get hold of your heart, sky is your limit. Take your neighbor. If you can get hold of your heart, sky is your limit. You leave your heart, you are looking at me, and your heart is, is free to say whatever you want to say. Don't allow that. That as you are looking at me, take hold of your heart. So, Mm, take more of me, give me more of you. Take more of me, give me more of you. Your, more of your faithfulness, more of your kindness, goodness. A lot, a lot of Bible, some hymns. Melody. Jesus, 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 Jesus. If it's that alone, it's okay. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Um, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Look at me in your mercy. 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 Give your heart assignments. Give your heart assignments. If you don't give your heart assignment, your heart will look for assignment. Ah, look at that air style. Look at that dress. Oh, look at that beautiful woman. Look at that handsome man. Oh, oh this church. There's a lot of changing. Oh, intelligent life. Oh, my God. Your heart will be roaming about. Watch the message you're not giving to your, ass, your heart. Your heart will just be doing whatever. Ah, look at the fruit. Will I have one today? Uh, what is going to happen? Oh, this church is beautiful. Oh, oh look at this man. Oh, I like his suit. I think I can get it. Oh, I saw one jeep at the car, new, uh, car park today. I, see, I think I'm going to camera the jeep. Oh, ah. Your heart keep roaming about, roaming about. This is what is putting you in trouble. This is what will distance you from God. This is why you are not filled with the Spirit. Talk to your heart. Keep your heart busy. Get on your heart. This is my life. This is why when I'm moving, when I'm going, I will not even know that you are passing me because I'm busy in my heart. You, talk, you think that because I'm not talking, I'm not busy. I Sometimes when I'm watching my television and they game football. Mm. You think that I'm watching football? It's only my eye that is watching, my heart. Take more of me, give more of me, take more of me, give more of me. Love. Mm. But Jesus! Ah. Maybe someone is wounded on the feet. After you hear me, Jesus! It means what I'm saying is what I... Or uh, when I'm sleeping, because my nature is to keep my heart busy, I give my heart job. Not my heart, give me job. Your heart is giving you job. When I'm sleeping, you think I'm sleeping. It's only my body. Come and attack me. You say, Jesus! But you, honey! <laughs> Which honey? Can honey help you? Your honey will say, What's happened, dear? Uh, don't worry, these people. It's these people. So we say, <coughs> leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me. What is happening? Honey, what is wrong? Uh, the name of Jesus is leave me. This is life you are living. Even when you are inside the vehicle and the car is about to, to get accident. In the process of getting some assault, Hey, hey, honey, 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 can honey help you? Because you are not used to it. At the end of the day, maybe you are trapped. They are giving you food in the dream, or the accident has happened or called. You say, Jesus, it has happened already. Why are you called Jesus? Hallelujah. Yes. Don't forget our message today. To be filled with the Spirit. The Word and the Spirit are inseparable. Integral, integral, integral are inseparable. That is, 
internally linked together, internally linked together. The way and the spirit. You cannot separate this. You can just come and say, Jesus, by what authority are you calling Jesus? Word and the spirit are internally linked together. If you want to live in the spirit, talk in the spirit, smile in the spirit, sleep in the spirit, eat in the spirit, keep in the word. Live in the word, abide in the word. And become totally saturated with the scripture. You will find yourself overflowing with the spirit. Tell your neighbor, if you want to live in the spirit, that is to live in the spirit is to be filled with the spirit. It is to be filled in the spirit. spirit. You want to live in the spirit, live in the spirit, live with Jesus. Sleep with the spirit, sleep with Jesus. Eat with the spirit, eat with Jesus. Tell your neighbor, if you want to live in the spirit, Keep in the word. Abide in the word. Become totally saturated with the scripture. You will find yourself overflowing with the spirit. Not just flow, but overflowing with the spirit. If I may take you back again, because I don't want this message to just go. I'm not a lecturer. I'm just telling you the message God has given me to tell you. What is going on in your heart now? Madam, as you are sitting, sit, sit down. As you are sitting, you must take control of your heart. If you don't take control of your heart, your heart will be jumping up, up, down. You'll see someone who put a wig there. Someone who is stuck in there. Someone who is shot in there. Someone, you'll be looking at the table, ah, look at this. Oh, this is beautiful attire. Mm. Mm. Take hold of your heart. Now, speak to your, to your heart. Continue to speak to your heart. In him, in some, the Lord is my shepherd, shall not want. Take more of me, give me more of you. A lot of things, message. Spiritual song in your heart. Make melody in your heart to God. Mm. Thank you, Lord. 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 Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Oh, look at me in your mercy. Look at me in your mercy. Look at me in your mercy. Look at me in your mercy, Lord. Look at me in your mercy. Look at me. Keep busy. Get out of your heart. Before you know it, here. You start speaking in tongues. You find yourself in another realm. Not only here, when you are home, home, when you are going, after break, when you are eating, as you are taking salad, whatever you are taking, look at me, your message, look at me. You know when your heart is talking, your lips cannot move. I'm just telling you what your heart will be engaged. Look at me, your message, take more of me, take more of me. You have to engage your heart. That is the prayer. The prayer you offer today are not prayer. The real prayer is that engage your heart, take more of me, give more of you. That is a prayer. But the one you pray, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh, that is not prayer. You are speaking to yourself. That is why your prayer is not answered. The real prayer, when you begin to engage your heart, you will not go where Jesus will not welcome. You will not say what Jesus will not want you to say. I want to ask a question. When did the spirit move? When did the spirit move? It was when Peter started speaking. And the spirit began to move. Before I will go further, 
I hope you have captured how to be filled. Have you captured it? Yes. Your heart, I repeat again, keep your heart. Get hold of your heart. You allow your heart to continue to throw you into problem, throw you to affliction, throw you about this, throw you about diabetic, throw you about this, throw you about that, thinking about doubt, doubt, doubt. No! Speak to your heart. You see me going? I'm engaged my heart. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you now what I engage my heart with. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus. Why I'm saying thank you, Jesus, in my heart, but my lips, no one know. If you call me, I will answer you. I will greet you because it's my heart that you engage. Thank you, Jesus. If somebody just come out to attack me, that thank you, Jesus, will, mm, will defend me. You always wait for attack before you call Jesus. You always wait for situation before you call Jesus. You always wait for when you need him before you call him. Tell your neighbor you don't know how much you need him. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Me? Mm, I don't wait for anything. As I'm walking, look at me in your mercy. Look at me in your mercy. But my lips is okay. You cannot know. But you say, that's why sometimes when you call me, good morning, sir. I don't answer prompts because I'm busy. If you come on the phone, if you engage with me on the phone, hello. You think I can't hear what you are saying? I hear, but I, because my heart is engaged. Let him, how are you? Where are you now? Okay, I'm in the church. Because I'm screening your voice there to know who is talking, whether it's Ogbanje or witchcraft. Voice is powerful than anything. Okay, last Sunday you saw what happened. I stood here, and I begin to say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, out there, out there, you see people vomiting, people coming out, boo, boo blood, my, my menstruation, fibroid, everything you see, voice, it's voice. And at home, all over the world, people are getting delivered. Me, I'm looking at me, listen to me. So this one said, they get you proper there. Not everybody listening to me is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Going by what we have read in Acts 10, verse 44. Not everybody listening to me is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I would not want you to come and leaning down and ask God, to fill you when you are not prepared. I will not want you to come and lean down and ask God to fill you when you are not what? When you are not prepared. Because the Holy Ghost is not received by everyone, only those who are prepared for him. And I have told you the preparation which you have received today to get hold of your hearts. Get hold of your hearts. Speak to yourself. In psalm, speak to yourself. In him, speak to yourself. In spiritual song, make melodies in your heart to God. Colossians 3, Ephesians 5, you find it there. I would like to have you meditate on the scripture. The more you meditate on what you read in the Bible and turn it over and over again in your heart, the more your heart act upon the word. Turn it over again and again in your heart. Tell your neighbor, turn it over. You know what it means? Turn it over. Over again in your heart. 
You know what I mean? It's like you are pounding yam, pounding, turn it over, turn it over. The more your heart, I mean, the more your spirit act upon the word. Act upon the word. Act upon the word. It's not just to read. The read, turn it over and over again in your heart. What you read. The more your heart acts upon the word. Because if you are not grounded in the word, if you are not grounded in the word, there will be nothing for the spirit to hold on. In that book of John 14, verse 26, it says, remind, there will, be, there, there, there will be nothing for the spirit to remind you of. That is John 14, verse 26. It must remind you of, that shall not kill, that shall not destroy, that shall not this, that shall not that. But if you are not grounded in the word of God, there will be nothing for the spirit to remind you, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not in the If there's nothing, the spirit will be released to the extent, to the measure, to the degree we stand in reverence, in honor of his word. I repeat again, the spirit of God will be released to you, to the extent, to the measure, to the degree you stand in reverence, in honor of his word. How do you honor his word? You say, Jesus must be honor, must be honor, must be honor. Jesus must be honored. They are talking about his way. You cannot, they are talking about his way. Jesus and his way are one. The spirit will be released to you. To the extent, to the degree, measure, you stand in reverence, I mean, in honor of his word. Before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must be sure that you can. Tell your neighbor, before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must be sure that you can. Hmm. Take this of that. Secondly, before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must desire that you read so much about the Spirit of God. You read accommodation, about you must prepare accommodation for the Spirit of God. And what is the accommodation? What he wants, what he does not want. You must think it, put it together and put your home in order. If your home has in, are in disarray, in disorderly, you must think how to arrange your home before it comes. Before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must be sure that you can. I'm telling you my personal experience, several years experience, I'm supporting it with the scripture for you. If I now go into scripture, begin to tell you when I'm not here, definitely it will be difficult for you to understand. That is why what you are reading all over and over, everywhere, you cannot practice in them. Are you sure you want to be possessed by a spirit? Are you sure with what you have Hard, are you sure 
You can be possessed by a spirit. This spirit is like Jesus. There are two kinds of spirit possession. Evil spirit possession, where a human personality is taking over, making filthy, dumb, and evil as we can see them being delivered, being cast out today, making them 50, dumb, evil. The Holy Spirit want to possess us, Christians. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit want to possess us, Christians. Because there is no way you can be a Christian without the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost wants to possess us, Christians. This spirit is like Jesus. Are you ready to be possessed by a spirit that is like Jesus? Ask your neighbor. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Are you ready to be possessed by a spirit that is like Jesus? You know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. You know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. You know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. You know Jesus, if truly you know Jesus, Holy Spirit. Are you ready to be possessed by a spirit that is like Jesus? I know Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbor. If truly you know Jesus, if truly you know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. Because we are not sure. Truly we, we don't know Jesus. You say you know Jesus, and you don't know the Holy Spirit. You mean you don't know Jesus. You say, I know Jesus, but you don't know the Holy Spirit. Me, you, you have not known Jesus. That's, there are many people that say they are Christian. They are not Christian. We, we are still religious people. You say you are a Christian. If truly you are a Christian, you know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. But here, I can't see Holy Spirit in the life of people. You know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. Truly, you know Jesus, you know the Holy Spirit. Because inseparable, intimately, lit together. It is when one is filled with the Spirit, then you can be baptized. But you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, and you are not going for baptism. You can never be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the challenge you are facing. When you say you are not a graduate, you never attend a university, but you bought a certificate that you have second class upper. Can you now go back to university again? That is the problem you are facing. Tell your neighbor, because you have been baptized by water, it is difficult for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because things ascending order. But now you are not taking descending order. You know you are not filled with the Spirit, but you are not being baptized. You can tell your pastor, Pastor, please, I'm not filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't baptize me. It's a curse. Can't you hear what Peter said? We cannot stop this people being baptized by the water because they are filled. Are you with me? If you're not a graduate and you bought a certificate, you say you're a graduate, and you say you have second class or upper class and you are not working. Can you now turn around and say, I'm going to university? They will not query you that what of the certificate you have. So the same way, you are baptized with the water. Now, can you now turn around and say, I need the Holy Spirit now? 
unless you are delivered. Say, I need deliverance. I need deliverance. <laughs> deliverance as well of water baptism. <laughs> you need deliverance? Yes. Deliverance of what? Yeah? Uh, even to say it uh, is difficult for you. <laughs> it's difficult for you to say it. Uh, deliverance of what? Yeah? Yeah, you have been baptized with the water. Double, eh? Over holy. Oh my God. Yes, we are on the way to the feeling. After this message, I, I know. You know way out now. I said the way out has come. Now, hallelujah. Now, if you now claim to know Jesus, and you don't know Holy Spirit, you know you are deceiving yourself. What is the role of Holy Spirit? What is the role? A spirit, pure, sound, gentle, wise, loving for that. Exactly what is he like? For that, for that is exactly what is he like? A spirit, pure, sin, gentle, wise. For that is exactly what is he like? The Holy Spirit is pure. He is the Holy Spirit. He is wise. For he is the spirit of wisdom. He is true. For he is the spirit of truth. He is like Jesus, for he is the spirit of Christ. He is like Father, for he is the spirit of Father. This spirit wants to possess you. This spirit wants to be your Lord. This spirit want to be your war. So that you will no longer be in control. You. You will no longer be in control of the little vessel in which you say your body. You know I'm the one say this one? Your little, this is little, little vessel, this vessel. I said this, but he want to be in charge, take over from me. Because without him, I will not be able to stand. I will not be able to be pure. I will not be able to be wise. I will not be able to be loving. I will not be able to be gentle. But he want to take control of this little vessel and sail it by himself. Are you sure you want to be possessed by the blessed spirit of father and son? Because you often like to be in charge. Founder, general overseer, I want to do this today, another tomorrow. Whereas God owns our future. Do you want your personality to be possessed by someone who is like Jesus? Tell your neighbor. Do you want your personality to be possessed by someone who is like Jesus? Again, ask your neighbor. 
Again? Again? Again and again? Again and again? I can't hear you. Do you want your personality to be taken over by someone who is like Jesus? You will not wake up and say, yes. Help me iron this today's suit. I will wear this on Monday, wear this on Tuesday, wear this on Wednesday. As if you are God. How do you know that you will see tomorrow? <laughs> Tell me. We are in the war. You have seen so much. Where people say, I will see you tomorrow. The next thing you learn that uh, is in the graveyard. Do you want your personality to be taken over by someone who is like Jesus? If you want that, begin to see today as if it's your last day on earth. Say, begin to see today as if it's your last day on earth. I can't hear you. Begin to see today as if it's your last day on earth. If you want your personality to be taken over by someone who is like Jesus, yes, you want. Right now, begin to see now as if it's your last day on earth. Now, begin to see today as if it's your last day on earth. If you see today as if it's your last day on earth, you know, all those things you keep somewhere, keep somewhere, and there's poor people on the street, instead of share with them, helping them, you promise of this, promise of this, of that, that, that. These are the propaganda. How do you know? Begin to see today as if it's your last day on earth if you want your personality to be taken over by Jesus. <laughs> if you are not filled with the Spirit, you cannot obey the written word. Let him show you. See, let you see your own. Let you see your own. Rest your own up. Say to yourself, if I'm not filled with the Spirit, I, the Spirit. I cannot obey the written word. I obey the Say, I cannot obey the written word. Obey if I'm not filled with the Spirit, I cannot obey the written word. This is why all what we are reading here is like literature to you. It's just mere literature. You read to preach, you read to teach, you are not read to live in it. You cannot live it. You cannot live what is here if you are not filled with the Spirit. You can preach it, this is that, this is that, but you read it to teach it, to preach it, to counsel people. But to live in it, you cannot. Because there's no way you can. And if you don't obey the scripture, you quench him. Quench him. It's gone. You quench him. So can you say the importance of the spirit? Can you say the importance of the spirit? If you don't obey the scripture, you will do what? You quench him. That's all. You are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. Irrespective of your knowledge in the Bible. If you are not filled with the spirit of God, you cannot obey the word of God. Because the holy men were carried along by the spirit as they were reading the word. It's not a literature. It's not something you can put here. You can memorize them. You can keep them here over the time, over the time. 
But to keep it in your heart, no way, without the Spirit. I want to leave you. Can you give me your words? Can somebody answer this question? How will you be filled with the Spirit? Can somebody? Because without Spirit of God, you cannot obey the written word. And you are not filled with the Spirit, and you are carrying Bible. Uh, Carrier. Tell your neighbor, you are not filled with the Spirit. And you are carrying the Bible. There is a Bible you carry, not only Bible. There is a Bible that is holy Bible. The Bible is, is the history, the event that happened during the apostles or the God's generals. But the holy, it has to do. Mm. Okay, can somebody answer this question? How will you be filled with the Spirit? Okay, give it to my brother. Okay, go. Uh huh. Give him. Meditating upon his word. What are you meditating on? Do you have the God. word? The word of God. The word of God. Yes. Are you doing that now? Yes, sir. No, no, no. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what you are meditating? Um, Psalm 28, verse 7. As you are looking at me? Yes, sir. Even as you are talking to me? Yes, sir. Because while you are talking to me, you cannot stop your meditation. Meditation is things of the heart. It's different from thinking. Thinking is lower level, upper level is meditation. So meditation, it has to do with heaven, knowledge of heaven. But thinking, it has to do with your challenges. When you say, ah, how will I get out of this mess now? You are thinking. How will I sleep now? You are thinking. Oh, I don't know what is wrong, what is wrong, what is wrong? You are thinking. That thinking leads to depression. So me, when you are meditating, you can answer people. You can talk to people while you are meditating. You can greet people while you are meditating. So let me hear from my brother. You mean you are meditating now? Yes, sir. As yes, sir. As you are talking to yes, me. Yes, sir. And when this will become part of you over the time, then your blood and your flu will, will cooperate. Right now at the beginning, your blood will not cooperate. Your blood will not, you know, blood cooperates when you move, the blood flow. But right now, when you begin at the beginning, your blood will not cooperate. You will find it difficult, you continue to do it. It's every, everything is like that. The beginning of everything is like that. When you want to start crawling, you know how you crawl it from baby. Now you are formerly an embryo, see what you have become today. Okay? So this is why we give you faith bracelets. So you have a bracelet, who have it here? Oh yes, come on, bring your tissue. This is why, this is why we have this. This is, it helps you to meditate. So, unlike religious people, when they have it, you see their mouth. <laughs> it is for meditation, to reset your belief. If you are meditate, you can still be talking to people and you are going on. Okay? That is so thank you very much. Clap for my brother. Oh, once again there. Okay. My brother here wants to tell us the way he will be filled today. When you are filled with God's word through meditation, it helps you to obey the words because your heart will not occupy you. Instead you occupy your heart. You listen to that? That is, the, the, the advantage of this is that uh, it will reset your belief. It will reset your focus. You know, many of us, we talk too much. We lie. We just lie. So all those things will reset your faith, your, your, your belief. So thank you very much. Where's again? Do it a little girl here. So are you, are, you, are, you, are you in that business now, Bus business of meditation? Eh? Now you know the meaning of meditation now. Speak to yourself in him, in psalm, in spiritual song. Make melodies in your heart. All the time, before you know it, 
Mm, you are fear. If this heart is the challenge you have, your heart is the one controlling you, directing you, but right now it is time to take hold of your heart. No, my heart. Mm, you have been embarrassing me. Heart has been embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, in order for you to be filled with the Spirit, you need to be grounded in the Word so that the Holy Spirit will have something to hold on to. Oh, if you. you are not grounded in the Word, the Holy Spirit will not have anything to remind you of God's Word. You listen to that. That in order to be filled, you have to be grounded in the Word. You have to be sound in your heart. If not, the Holy Spirit will not have we have nothing to remind you. That's an okay from the Bible. Is this, who is the one telling us this? So please, thank you. Any, any other? Thank you. Give it to the sister there. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel, since I know what Holy Spirit means by, I, before I used to be hungry and aggressive to my sis kids. You used to be? Aggressive, hungry. And this thing that gave me heart attack, hypertension, blood pressure. My daughter over there said, look, if you want to live long, you have to be calm. Mm. And really, I remember Holy Spirit work for me since I started meditating, because I remember when daddy bring out these fragrances that take more of me and give more Let of you. Let you see your, your... Take more of me and give more of you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Clap More for of your faithfulness, more of your wisdom. You listen to that? That is the, when this faith-based love was given, the language follow, take more of me, give me more of you. Now I've given you another one today. Locate, locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your favor. Locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your favor. Locate me in your mercy. Locate me in your favor. Take more of me, give me more of you. Even when I'm praying for you, you continue to that meditation. Locate me in your favor. Look at me in your mercy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my sister, thank you. Any other? Okay, give it to my brother there. Emmanuel. I'm a first comer here in Synagogue of All Nations. I listen to Emmanuel TV all the time. Mm. And Emmanuel TV has changed my life. Mm. I don't read the Bible before, on the side I watch Emmanuel TV. And when I started watching Emmanuel TV, I went man of God started preaching and advising that we should be meditating. Take more of you. God, give more of you, take more of me. And imbibe that culture. I'm a clinical pharmacist. I have my own clinical pharmacy. When I cancer patient, I see them on daily basis. At this, on this occasion, I was in my office, attending to patient. Because I've imbibed the culture of giving more of you, take more of me. This time I was doing that, and I was attending to a patient. As, and I was meditating. Give more of you, take more of me. Behold, the mother and the daughter. The mother, after complaining, the daughter followed. As the daughter was talking, I was meditating, give more of you, take more of me. Lord, give more of you, take more of me. Lord, give more of you, take more of me. Then, and I mentioned, the, I was up talking to the girl, and I said, okay, how are you? What's your name? I said, shake me. The woman I shook this girl. He said, leave me. Hmm. Leave me. Do you know me? Do you know who I am? Hmm. You see me small. I'm a big woman. Hmm. This woman sitting here, he does not know anything. It's a small woman. In fact, I was shocked. I was looking. I said, God, glory be to God. The God of prophecy with Joshua has taken me to this realm. I want to go more to the other realm. Thank you. You listen to that? What, you remember what I told you? That the prayer you used to offer, all this while you are wasting your time. The prayer is all about heart. But your prayer is all about your mouth. You are just wasting your time. Each time I see people say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I say, oh. 
you are inviting attack. Will you reset yourself now and start this meditation? That is the prayer you need now. As you are sitting, what is going on in your heart? Ask your neighbor, what is going on in your heart? If you take hold of your heart, at, are you in charge? Speak to yourself. His son, in him, his spiritual son. Make melody in your heart. You see what's happening now? He was meditating in his heart. No one knows what he was saying in his heart. But mere stretching hand to the little one. Hey, leave me. I'm this. I'm that. He started confessing. You keep deceiving yourself. You say you are praying. Those who are not supposed to pray for you, praying for you. But those who are evil, many, you are better, are praying for you. Because prayer has become a culture, a tradition. Prayer is not a tradition. It's as it should be by divine way. You wake up in the morning, you say, family, let's pray. Let's pray. Instead of cancel your family first, tell your family, hey, hello, good morning. What's happened? What happened yesterday? You know, I corrected you yesterday, little one. I told you not to do this. I hope you have learned your lesson from this. Okay. Uh, what is going on in your school? Please come on. I mean, the way you look is not right. You keep malice. Please be cheerful. I said, Christian, do you have any pain? What is worrying you? These are cancer you need to give to your family. Eh? After that cancer, you're not telling them about Jesus. Tell them about the Holy Spirit I'm talking about now. They know the, this is what uh, the, the, the Bible says. And the prophet Joshua also mentioned last Sunday that, look, you have to speak to yourself with all your heart. Speak to yourself. That is the, bigger, the biggest prayer. Every other prayer are small. The biggest prayer is speak to your heart. Take hold of your heart. Speak to yourself in some, in him. Make melody while you are working, while you are sleeping, while every time. That is the greatest prayer that defeat the enemy, that will help you, that will protect you. That is the prayer, the one you make today. Waking up and calling, in Jesus' name, reboot, reboot, bang, in the name of Jesus, in the brother of Jesus, and the Father, Jesus Christ, we are going to work today, help us. Whom are you talking to? You have wasted time. You have seen enough of this prayer. You can see that nothing. Thank you, brother. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Give him, give him, give him. What is the best prayer to God? Can somebody can give it to my brother? The best prayer. The best prayer. Uh -huh. Emmanuel. Uh -huh. The best prayer is the prayer that comes from the heart. From the heart. How can the prayer come from the heart? You know, when you are meditating on the word of God in your heart, and your heart is connected with God. Mm -hmm. That is the best prayer ever because that is the greatest prayer ever. I have an example. Of when I was in a car one day and I was meditating on the word of God. Then the driver, I was in front with two people plus the driver. I was the little boy by then. Once I was meditating on the word of God, the driver shouted, K. Then I said, Jesus. Then I was standing outside on my feet. I don't know where I passed from. Either the screen or the wheel. I don't know where I passed from. I was standing outside. While the driver and the two people, they always broke in. They were just still in the car. They couldn't come out. The car was only three times. So I thank God I shouted Jesus before, at that time. Before it happened. Before it happened. And I was standing outside. But our people today, they shout Jesus after it happened. I know you. I know you. Chief. I know you. You child Jesus after after nightmare. You child after trouble. You child. So I want to leave you once again. Please be free.
So I want to have your report. Send me an email and let me follow it up. Hallelujah. Amen. This Bible you are carrying. Without the Holy Spirit, it's literature. This Bible you are carrying, without the Holy Spirit, is history. It's not possible for anyone to obey the word of God without the Holy Spirit. Not that you will not obey when you say, that shall not lie. Without the Holy Spirit, you say, no, I will not lie again. Hmm. Maybe Joshua say, in this message, we should not lie. We should not lie. You keep that one for one day, two day, two day, three day, four day. In five days, you become the greatest liar. <laughs> you will explode. That is how far you can go. But with God, eh? But how far you can go, you keep it. Mm, mm, that shall not lie. Mm, first day, you'll be conscious of yourself. You want to, want to lie, but you are conscious. Ah, the Bible says we should not lie. The second day, the third day. What of you drunker? You stop today, stop dance, stop five day, second day, third day. In the dream, they will give you to drink. You finish 10 bottles of drink. Yeah. By the time you take it so much in your dream, you wake up. You are going to be up a lot to drink. Without the Holy Ghost, without the Holy Spirit, no one can obey the written word of God. Tell your neighbor. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.